scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You hear several people come to share testimonies here and they will tell you that the Holy Spirit led me or an individual led me to a message and I sat down. Listen. The way to lasting results is to stay with God until light from his word comes into your spirit. God is not a herbalist. He does not practice divination. Are we together? Prophetically, you can receive short-term results by the extension of God's mercy. But every time you want to obtain lasting results, please do not allow the devil deceive you to just play games and play pranks with your destiny there is by the grace of God at least one teaching audio or video that should be able to speak to any challenge or any issue of concern hallelujah I will submit to you respectfully speaking that many believers are lazy just because of the advantage of things like favor mercy the ministry of the Holy Spirit we have allowed it and and we preachers sometimes i say we including myself we need to be careful how we mentor believers so that in a bit to help them know the truth we do not culture a life of spiritual irresponsibility it will always be man in partnership with god to make anything happen hallelujah there are many believers who have several requests several issues and you ask them have you taken any time to stay with God and to come even for one day with a strategic message that speaks to that issue for many if they are sincere the answer is no we live in a world of fast everything sharp sharp we want it to happen now sharp sharp anointing sharp sharp whatever except God is a God of speed but God does not rush people. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen to sit. All those who ate bread at Jesus' crusade were first made to sit down. He said, let them, see. if you are too big or too in a hurry to sit down, then you will not have bread. Those who ate the bread and fish were those who were patient enough to sit down hallelujah when i find a subject that addresses an area or resources that address areas of ignorance in my life or limited knowledge i can listen to one hour a one hour message for three days sincerely i will pause after 15 minutes and pray in tongues and ask the spirit of god to reveal to me and sometimes you can even have more light even than the preacher because of your hunger hallelujah i love you sincerely from the depth of my heart and i desire to see everyone grow and attain stature in the spirit there is one thing i will tell you a life of spiritual irresponsibility will never translate to constructive maturity my assignment is to help. My assignment is to teach. My assignment is to guide and to mentor. And this is a covenant. I will do it with all my heart and for as long as I live. But every one of us under the sound of my voice, 
and then speaking to our global family we must be prepared to take responsibility i consider any believer an unserious believer if there are many life-threatening issues around your life and then you are not sourcing for the spiritual resources that can bail you out it is amazing how many believers continue to play games with their life and then when you look at their lives you find out that absolutely nothing is working spiritually they are down prayer life down as far as spiritual intelligence is concerned zero or f are we together financially they are broke they are suffering no favor nobody helps them even their loved ones how could you be at ease under that kind of condition listen take it as a project to identify areas of spiritual ignorance and deal with it until light comes hallelujah if you are doing well spiritually and you're not excelling in the area of say leadership and administration zoom your attention to that area and learn everything is within reach if you have the humility to discern and the patience to learn there are listen for most of the resources that make for an excelling life money is hardly a tool that you would need to get them in our world today you would need to use another kind of currency like honor like meekness like patience like hunger these are all currencies the bible says buy the truth hallelujah yeah. so please let me encourage us there are many people who are tapping into this this frequency of spiritual seriousness and you see that the testimonies are showing but there are many others who are still giving flimsy excuses and hoping that superstitiously or magically the holy spirit will just exempt them from the woes that are scheduled in and to any life that does not take god seriously it's a risk to be passive and careless and nonchalant not in today's world hallelujah so please obtain grace obtain grace thank god for the area that is working but focus on the area that is not working and say lord grant me grace let by your light let me see light what is it about these finances that it seems to stare me at the face i am a man of god or i'm a businessman or i'm a father and i'm unable to take care of my family i'm tired of the shame and the reproach that comes from spiritual ignorance rather than just blaming demons even if demons are to be blamed what do you do do you sit back there and just say okay demons are to be blamed hallelujah i think we should pray in one minute ask the lord for grace to be serious please cry from the depth of your heart lord thank you for helping me so far but i take full responsibility over my destiny i confess ignorance in this area and in that area and i am determined like a responsible believer to take advantage of the resources that you have placed within my reach and contend for light someone is praying someone is praying I obtain grace let my life begin to produce results consistent results that bring glory to the name of the Lord for in Jesus name I pray tonight's message will transform your life in a very mighty way I'm here tonight to fulfill a promise I made. I promised that I was going to do a very powerful teaching um, and that I will reserve that teaching for our Father's Day and today is that day. So this is a message that applies to everyone but then I'm dedicating it specially to all our men and all our fathers. May the Lord grant us grace. In the name of Jesus. Redefining inheritance. 
redefining inheritance please write it down and let's pay attention as the holy spirit speaks to us redefining inheritance all across the globe every time especially an elderly man a father especially one who uh, has the privilege of being blessed in his lifetime when there is any transition after a period of mourning and crying then comes the next trouble the issue of managing the estate or managing what we call the inheritance and um, it has gone so bad unfortunately in our world today that children actually sit down and wish and pray and hope and even sponsor the transition of their loved ones in hope to accelerate their accessing what we know and what we call to be inheritance and i've studied the subject of posterity i've studied the subject of continuity i've studied the subject of succession and that includes inheritance and by the spirit of god i have been able to put some thoughts as a product of these contemplations and this will be um, our discussion tonight hoping that god will grant us superior spiritual intelligence to really understand god's idea of inheritance because i submit to you by the authority of scripture that most people have missed it as far as understanding and even administering this whole idea of inheritance it is the reason why we do not have succession it is the reason why you can find a family an estate a business with one person excelling throughout his lifetime and then at his transition everything dies in spite of physical things available and around so god will grant us grace in jesus name proverbs chapter 13 please and verse 22 proverbs 13 22 blessed be the name of the lord proverbs 13 22 the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children the a part is my emphasis but let's just finish up and the wealth of the sinner it says is laid up for the just it says a good man so in the mind of god and scripture there are many indices that are used to measure a noble or a good man and among them the bible says a man's being good is also measured using the index of his ability to live an inheritance not only to his children but his children's children hallelujah that means the minimum uh, point of focus as far as succession is concerned is at least two generations not even the immediate generation a good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children hallelujah luke chapter 15 luke chapter 15 will begin our reading from verse 11 this is the story of the prodigal son we'll read to 14 then we'll jump from 25 so that we can walk with time there is a lot for us to learn and he said a certain man had two sons the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and the bible says he divided unto them his living that means the young boy said father there is something i know that as an heir as one who is a beneficiary of your estate i'm not going to wait until you die give me my inheritance or the portion of good that fall to me and the father honored it that means the father based on the bible definition was a good man do we agree yes verse 12 or 13 now the bible says and not many days after the after 
the younger son gathered okay not many days after the younger son gathered all together that means he gathered something physical is that true it tells us immediately that what the father gave him was physical he gave him something physical or material the bible says he gathered all together watch this now and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance so the problem was not that the boy was not given he was given something physical and the bible says he gathered it and he wasted his substance with riotous living 14 and when he had spent all someone says spent all it's interesting that we never have this term used for the father the father being the owner of the wealth and the estate it was never said about the father he spent all and yet when we get to the son an expression is introduced now that is very disturbing that the young boy spent all that means that inheritance already this tells you is beyond physical things because he was given and yet the bible says there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want there was a day he was not in want but he began to be in want let's go to verse 25 now the elder son this gentleman had returned back home you know the story fed with swine until he was broken repented came back was restored now a feast was organized in honor of his return and the elder son was in the field the bible says and as he came and drew nigh to the house he heard music and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound what a good man and he was angry the elder brother now and would not go in therefore came his father out and entreated him and he answering said unto his father lo this many years do i serve thee pay attention to that this many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any time thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me a kid that i might make merry with my friends verse 30 the father made a statement in 30 and 31 that is very instructive he says but as soon as this thy son was come which had devoured thy living with harlots thou hast killed for him the fatted calf 31 and he said unto him son thou art ever with me and all that i have everybody say all that i have <laughs> ah that means there was more that he had than the boy got he said the boy got some things but you are with me all that i have we want to examine what are the all that that man had because the bible lets us know that he gave the guy physical things and that is all that most people know to be inheritance and the boy left because he received physical things and did not receive others he came back in shame and the father said don't worry don't regret that i gave him physical things and i did not give you all that i have that means there is more that i have within me father give us understanding in the name of jesus christ in my study of scripture and the privilege of mentorship from exceptional people cutting across ministry the business world leadership and veterans people who have mastered life in its entirety i have learned from scripture that when the bible talks about an inheritance there are five things that qualify to be called an inheritance and please listen to me even if you receive only four over that five you did not receive the inheritance it has to be five over five for it to be said from a kingdom standpoint that you received an inheritance 
please fathers listen carefully men listen carefully because there are many people today who have gone to their graves or if if they have an opportunity to come back to life they will cry and weep because their entire estates their whatever physical blessings that they had it was ruined in less than one year because all they gave their children were physical things the story of the prodigal son is a very powerful lesson that it will take more than giving physical things are we together that when you want to transfer an inheritance you don't have to be dead you can transfer an inheritance even in your lifetime but that many parents many fathers many elderly people are making a costly mistake that needs to be corrected through tonight's sermon because their focus in succession and transferring what they call to be an inheritance is simply physical estate cars houses or whatever it is and unfortunately this has produced a generation of irresponsible people who cannot even perpetuate any blessing even beyond one generation but the lord will help us tonight in the name of jesus christ so there are five five things that the bible expects one generation to transfer to the other in order for that generation to say they have given an inheritance five very quickly we'll get to the business of the night number one the first thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance that every father must transfer to his children every leader must transfer to their subordinates no matter what else you give people if you do not give them these you did not transfer an inheritance are you ready number one your convictions the first thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your convictions or are your convictions your convictions are a summation of your philosophies your beliefs your mindset so that if you want to bless the next generation more than just giving them physical things the first thing you need to give the next generation are your convictions everybody say convictions the summation of your philosophies your beliefs your mindset genesis chapter 18 please we'll read verse 17 to 19 genesis chapter 18 hallelujah please look up this was um a discussion between the lord and abraham as touching sodom and gomorrah and the lord said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do why verse 18 seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him please read verse 19 together let's read verse 19 together are you ready one to read for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him so the lord is saying there's no need abraham has become my friend among many reasons that he always thinks succession i know that anything i tell abraham will be preserved because he will transfer it even to the generations coming the first gift and the first blessing that any elder male or female any leader any man of god the moment you want continuity you want succession for your life the first thing that you have to give is your convictions if you cannot transfer your convictions to your subordinates to your son spiritually and physically then you have not given them an inheritance 
are we together by the way let me back up a bit and um define for you let's talk forgive me let me just take a minute or two and put everyone in perspective let's define an inheritance we're still on course i just thought to take a break and then define an inheritance and then we'll continue what does it mean to inherit to inherit means to receive by succession or by will it's a legal statement to inherit means to receive by succession or to receive by will as an heir an heir there means a legally entitled person to inherit means to receive by succession or to receive by will as an heir so when we talk about someone inheriting something it means that you receive by succession or you receive by the will as an heir an heir there means you are legally entitled to it now let's define inheritance what is an inheritance an inheritance i wrote here is an acquisition of a possession could be property could be a condition or could be a trait an acquisition of a possession could be a property could be a condition could be a trait from past generations especially from parents to offsprings i'll take it again an inheritance is an acquisition of a possession be it property be it a condition or be it a trait from past generations especially from parents to offsprings so when we talk about inheritance we mean acquiring like we did say either by succession or through the will as an heir i believe you have that now so let's go to our discussion that there are five things that must be transferred from past generations to the next generation to make for succession and to qualify that you have laid up an inheritance for your children number one are your convictions deuteronomy chapter 6 will read for sake of time 1 2 7 20 and 21 1 2 7 20 and 21 i'll read and you listen now these are the commandments the statutes and the judgments which the lord your god commanded to teach you listen carefully that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it verse 2 that thou mightest fear the lord thy god to keep his statutes and his commandments which i command thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life that thy days may be prolonged are we together now john please to verse 7 verse 7 it says and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up verse 20 and when thy son asketh thee in the time to come saying what meaneth the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the lord hath commanded you 21 it says then thou shalt say unto thy son we were pharaoh's born men in egypt and the lord brought us out by a mighty hand and then you read and read and it continues now the point is this that he's admonishing them that listen everything you are learning by reason of your experience that is building your conviction make sure you are close enough to your children that you do not leave without teaching them practice them in front of your children and let them ask you questions why do you believe this why do you know this there are many wealthy people many anointed people 
many great people who never reproduce themselves do you know why because they are unable to transfer their convictions the first thing to transfer to your children or to the generation coming are your convictions not material things is someone learning convictions now aside from the bible second only to the bible i have been thoroughly blessed and transformed by the industry we call the personal development industry hallelujah where we have men and women who have been able to shape our philosophies and our approach to life um one of the stories that comes very readily to mind was the story of a wealthy man, arguably the first billionaire recorded in the United States when they became a nation by the name Andrew Carnegie. Listen very carefully. Andrew Carnegie was a very successful man, history would tell us. And then one time it was said that he felt very disappointed that many of the wealthy people within his class and the blessed people and the great people they were going to their graves and were never transferring the truths that made them wealthy and great and other people who were failures or average people were just spectators and they did not really know the secrets that controlled that level of excellence and then he got a young man like many of you know and may have heard called napoleon hill a young man in his 20s history would tell us and a young journalist and he gave him an assignment listen carefully the assignment was that i would give you letters of recommendation go and meet every one of these great and successful persons and i want you to interview all of them one by one piece together their philosophies and put it together in a concise format so that when we are long gone we will be able to leave our convictions for the generations that come and napoleon hill took on that journey and for a period of about six years there about he went around interviewing all the greatest and the brightest of the minds at that time and came together with 13 principles captured in a book that we know many of you may have heard about it called think and grow rich that was the product of that research vetting and interviewing all of these bright minds what philosophies did they honor to have produced such excelling lives hallelujah when i read that story many years ago it was so instructive listen to me you never reproduce a man's result until you are able to reproduce his philosophies his belief systems and his convictions never forget this no wonder the bible says let this mind be in you you want to become like jesus in experience you need to find out his convictions his philosophies his mindset the first and about most important um transference that needs to happen from one generation to the other is not physical things the transference of convictions the transference of mindsets the transference of philosophies the transference of beliefs believe me the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart is that in your bible it says so is he that means if something is wrong in your life i have taught you this that your physical environment is only a reflection of the quality of your thinking and your philosophies unfortunately those who desire to receive from great men are not interested in receiving their convictions they don't focus on their minds to to put together the quality of their thinking please look up what do you believe about god what do you believe about satan what do you believe about failure what do you believe about success what do you believe about excellence what do you believe about wealth what do you believe about poverty what believe what do you believe about challenges what do you believe about victory these are the summation these philosophies will frame your mindset 
and will inevitably translate to the results you have you can have two men of god who love god sincerely mentored under the same father or the same mentor and you find out that their results become different impartation is there several other things are there but one may be interested in learning more than just physical things for one he may be interested in holding the mic and making news the other wants to study this is very powerful so the first gift please hear me any father here any parent any leader any businessman any man of god in thinking succession the first gift that you can give your child and should give your child are a summation of your convictions what made you great what did you know what did you believe what have you come to hold through that has translated to an excelling life that is the first gift that you give your child not material things unfortunately there are many children that pride themselves in cars and houses and designer clothes nothing wrong with that except that their lives are empty like the prodigal son because the prodigal son had physical things but no conviction are you seeing that now when the elder brother wanted to get sad the father said no don't feel bad there is something that gentleman did not ask for he asked for physical things but there are other things that i have one of them being my conviction i was not born like this so find out what i believed to be what I, let me tell you this every parent here i challenge you and every father and every leader make sure you do not go to your grave without capturing and preserving your philosophies and your beliefs in the most concise way give it to your child as a gift and you truly give him an inheritance hallelujah your convictions the first gift that must be transferred from one generation to the other now please look up do you know why there are so many people who are poor and mediocre i'm not talking about finances but just to borrow a concept when a poor man poor them meaning a description not an insult when a poor man sees a wealthy man the first thing he looks at is his pockets not his mind are we together you know a poor man not just by the absence of resources but his passion to see what is in the box poor people admire physical things the glitz and the glamour that come with great men but any mind that wants to rise is focused on the mentality what do you know and what do you understand let me challenge you therefore that in your quest to live an excelling life or to create succession to your results the first thing you should look out for are men and women whose minds are open and malleable to receive not people whose hands are free to receive people whose minds are ready to receive no wonder in many homes you see that those who truly receive the inheritance are some of the outcasts the boys that walk and do all of that because the children never learn the young boy is there watching the father while he's praying he may not be a biological son but he's there watching every step the day the father is not there all the children are at the mercy of the one who has the mindset not just the one who has the physical things hallelujah so the first thing you transfer if you are a good man leaving an inheritance to your children's children are your convictions be sure that your convictions have produced a correct result otherwise don't transfer something that will reproduce your own failure too the condition to transfer your convictions is that if those convictions have produced an excelling life unfortunately the same mindset that transfers excellence is the same mindset that transfers mediocrity also mediocres remain transgenerational mediocres by transferring a mindset that makes for mediocrity in fact i can tell you this by scripture and by reason of what i do most of what we call generational causes and most of what we call generational spiritual problems have been kept that way through generational mindsets that are passed along to 
so if a territory has generational poverty what happens is it is not only the spirit that is transferred the spirit will ensure that the mindset that makes it comfortable in administering poverty is also transferred that's why listen to my series on deliverance your real deliverance is not just exiting that spirit out of your life but there has to be a reorientation the bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind unfortunately age does not equal transformation longevity in this life may administer experience through pain but it does not necessarily produce transformation hmm. is someone learning the next time your son comes to say daddy i want my inheritance tell him let me not see you near my garage or near my bank account go and get a clean sheet of paper and come and sit down let me transfer my inheritance and then start telling him the story that i was an orphan and as you are telling him that story ask him to write you are transferring an inheritance because at the end of that story the young boy will see and learn sadly the bible never told us how the prodigal son's father became great it just tells us that the man was great can i tell you every great man you admire seek to find out their philosophies what do they know what have they learned the moment you are receiving is start rejoicing because i assure you behind their convictions is the power that reproduces their results this man of god is having great results in ministry i can tell you it's not just impartation go and find out what are his covenants with god what are the things that informs his mindset why does he carry such a strange and a great presence of god what are the sacrifices that pack his ministry everybody say convictions yes sir i've had the honor and the privilege of meeting extremely successful people in my life fathers of faith business people veterans and every time i have the privilege of meeting and talking with them i'm not asking them how much are your shoes and shirt that is that is an unwise use of time i go straight to ask them please can you tell me your story and then i'm looking for the punch lines in the story when you change your mindset when you made a decision and i find keys there in the name of jesus i speak over your life the keys you must find the transference of beliefs that produce an excelling life may god help you to be sensitive to it yeah. hallelujah please sit down do you know that history and even statistics tells us that those who are closest to great people hardly become great themselves you know why because their focus is on the results usually it's those who do not have that privilege of access they are the ones who keep looking and between the lines they find keys let me charge you respectfully if god has granted you the privilege to live a blessed and excelling life financially intellectually in terms of your ranking and stature let me give you a kind advice respectfully speaking culture your children to understand that giving them physical things is not net inheritance it is the transference of beliefs is someone learning number two let's hurry up hmm. what is the second thing you must transfer to the next generation are you ready the second thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your name the second thing you should transfer to your children as a good man is your name write it down your name means your credibility your name means your track record your name means your impact your name means your value and your contribution the second thing that is worth transferring for succession to happen to be called a good man according to scripture is your name your credibility your track record your impact your value and contribution it can be transferable very very powerful 
Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2. Genesis 12 and verse 2. Someone is learning. It says, and I will make of thee a great nation. Is that in your Bible? And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Let me tell you the difference between being great and having a great name. When you are great, you are great for yourself. But when you have a great name, other generations can use it as a leverage. Today we buy products. We are not buying products. We are buying names. Are we together? When you go to a store and you say Louis Vuitton or Angelo Galasso or Gucci, you are calling the names of people. They transferred that name. At the end of your life, your name will either be a key or a padlock. There is no being neutral. At the end of your life, whether as a preacher, as a leader, as a businessman, and as a parent, your name to those who are before you will be a padlock or will be a key. It will either lock the doors and the destinies of people, multiplying hardship, or it will open doors for them. If you're with me, please shout amen. amen. Everybody say your name. Amen. Mm. Even Jesus gave us his name. He said, use my name. Don't mind the devil. Don't forget about how he looks. Whenever you see him, use my name. He said, in my name, there are possibilities that happen. It is not only the name of Jesus that is powerful. The name of a man is an investment of his track record, his credibility. There are names in this country if you call, you will get a job immediately. Even if there is no space, they will create it because that name is a track record of investment of many years. Hallelujah. There are people who, when favor is about to happen to you, you keep praying that the name is not mentioned within that environment. Because the moment that name is mentioned, there will be a reversal of that favor. John, which John? The, the tall one? No, please leave my office. Because with that name has come the memory of pain in 1975. That was the wicked man who caused trouble. Now the man has gone to be with the Lord. And yet people are still suffering because of his name. Can I tell you, you are a failure truly if you cannot transfer your name. I don't mean the spelling of it. I mean the power that you would have accumulated in that name through many years. So next time your son comes or your daughter or your subordinate and say, give me my inheritance. Tell them, I hope you are not talking of money. Sit down. Let me tell you, the name you carry contains within it favor. God has used that name to lift many. Take advantage of that name. Are we together? Hmm. The second thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your name. Please do not pray with your credibility. Do not play with your track record. These are all build-ups giving you a name that your children and your children's children will eat from. There are people who may not have physical money, but their children will never beg for food. You know why? Because even though they were cleaners, their track record, their integrity gave them a name. And tomorrow they will say, who this name it looks familiar they'll say my father is that carpenter i don't care if he's the carpenter come and you sit here let me tell you the world that we live in now most people will be lifted by the name they carry more than just their intellectual investment i can tell you in a city like abuja the first thing i learned when i moved into this city is that most of the things that happen to people is is not so much of course there is a place for meritocracy but i can tell you names can be a leverage there are people today who want to change different parts of their names for safety is that true because when they found out the stories behind that name they said this is too much battle i can't i can't spend my life fighting something i don't know anything about your name 
Jesus said in my name take that name walk wonders with it when God makes your name great even when you are not there the name remains there and other people can come and use that name it's like a vehicle are we together the vehicle does not care who drives it just make sure it is driven and it will move please learn it your name is not just certain initials to identify you there are people today who have gotten jobs beyond their educational qualifications because of names may your name be a key in the name of jesus christ can i tell you there are people today who are suffering because their names brought them to trouble or the names that they inherited brought them to trouble every time you mention it there is trouble your credibility that means every day as you live your life you are adding pain to your children or adding favor did you hear what i said every day as you live your life you are making investments to your name by the time you are 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or maybe when you are long gone the investment you have made in your name like a bank account there are bank accounts that have 10 naira using the naira currency 100 naira 1 million there are bank accounts that have billions then there are those who own the banks they all have names there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no my goal is that god will use by the privilege of his grace whether my name the name of this ministry that it will become a key both in the physical realm in the economic realm in the spiritual realm in the political realm there are master keys they can open any door why is it the key in revelation called the key of david that is the key that can open a door that no man can shut please hear me there are many of you the way you are living your life now you are not yet seeing the effect is when your children come or when they grow you will know that you have spent your life investing pain from the wickedness to the jealousy to the attitudes that you keep bringing you got a job and nobody can get that job again because of you you oppress people and you are acting i am alpha and omega respectfully speaking one day you will retire and then when you retire you will now find out that there are children coming there are lecturers who victimize students and destroy them today those their children cannot get jobs because they never gave people a chance for a great life do not pride in being a wicked person you are programming pain for your children the second inheritance that you must pay attention to is your name hmm. your name your name Jesus protected his name protected his name and guarded his name because he was going to give us that name today that name has been exalted Abraham I will make thy name great is someone learning already let me give you a kind counsel live your life knowing that others will be beneficiaries of your carelessness or of your attentiveness to the laws of life you have to know this and you have to believe it there are many of us right now except god intervenes the way we are living our lives our children are already in trouble we don't have to talk about demons you have already programmed it it will take god and favor working together to bail them out because based on our attitudes there is no possibility for a job no possibility for a great life it ought not to be so please hear me if you're a man of god here let me give you a kind counsel it will take more than preaching 
Greek and Hebrew words, more than laying on of hands, more than the ability to speak well, to be able to last transgenerationally. You must make sure that more than your preaching, you are sincere to invest in men. Hide away and deal with your insecurities and trust people. By the time you fight everybody and you are the Alpha and the Omega as the man of God, the day you are weak or you are not there, that vision dies. Is God helping us? Respectfully speaking, there are people in ministry and there are people in business who have fought everybody. Anybody who is not you, you fight them. Fight every church. Fight every man of God. Fight every other person and you stand proud. You are programming disaster to yourself and everybody there. The Lord is helping us tonight. A good man liveth an inheritance. Inheritance number two, your name. Are you ready for number three? Inheritance number three that must be transferred. In fact, I didn't finish. Let me give you two more scriptures on that name. Proverbs 22 and verse 1. It says a good name. Proverbs 22 and verse 1. A good name is rather to be chosen. Look at the Bible. Than great riches that if we keep riches here physical riches and we keep a good name he advises you to choose a good name because a good name can buy riches but riches cannot buy a good name ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 again it says a good name is better than precious ointment man of god anointing is powerful but make sure with that anointing you have a good name a credibility and a track record of loving sincere people i was returning from um a trip you know coming back to prepare for the service and i was handed a newspaper and i was just going through it and i saw somebody wrote something that blessed me so much he said um, i hope i can remember he said there are many people who are powerful but very few people are loving i said wow this is so instructive many people are powerful do you know how many men of god have power but there is no love how many business people have resources and intellect but you come near them you want to run away they don't look like christ at all he says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you raise the dead not when you teach properly much more than all of these things i am telling you the greatest uh, virtue that qualifies you is your love life are we together you will be surprised that there are many people as sound as they are spiritually as intelligent as they are intellectually they never find help and nobody wants to come around them you know why i have taught you and we teach it a lot in the school of ministry that people do not care what you know until they know that you care they don't care what you know it's none of their business carry your greek and hebrew carry your anointing take it places they want to know that you genuinely love them if you keep power and keep love I will pick love a thousand times before I pick power because what defeated Satan on the cross was not power it was love there abided these three faith that moves mountains hope that makes not a shame and love he says the greatest is love is someone learning now let's go to number three what is the third inheritance you must transfer to the generations after you your relationships and connections number three so number one your convictions number two your name a summation of your credibility your track record your value your contribution number three if you ever want to bless your children your subordinates or the people you are raising give them the leverage of your relationships and your connections hmm. John chapter 19 please John chapter 19 let's read from verse 26 God is speaking to someone tonight now watch this 
this is Jesus hanging on the cross <laughs> and he sees remember all the disciples had gone away from him but there was this one person John and his mother standing before him watch what happened when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved because he loved him he said unto him mother behold your son and then 27 he said to the disciple behold your mother and your bible says from that hour that disciple took her home that means this is the woman that made me mighty i know you call me jesus but respect the woman who raised me until the holy ghost came i transferred that relationship john no wonder he did not die a natural death the same way it, it took listen jesus had to lay his life down and until his time was on all other disciples and apostles were martyred except john the be loved not john the powerful find out what mary did when jesus handed over her to him don't you think mary was an ordinary woman the angel spoke about her and said you are favored there were things she was carrying and he said john i want to give you a gift for standing by me on the cross i hand you over to this woman follow her she will do something to you do you know what it means to carry the word of god in your womb for nine months you will never be normal never be normal hear me please relationships are a potent leverage you can hand over relationships and cut short somebody's 10 years of suffering the third inheritance god is changing someone's life your relationships to the point that when the holy ghost when jesus was going to heaven he said don't worry there is a relationship i'm about to introduce to you don't worry i am living but do not cry there is one called alos paracletos the paraclet himself i am about to connect you to a relationship and when he that spirit of truth is come that he will guide you you will no longer be ordinary men all it takes is a relationship please listen you have heard me say it that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and without fighting her she stopped becoming queen immediately then the king likes a village woman and immediately she became queen please look at me can i tell you this every great man is great among other factors because of the relationships that protect and defend him at that realm you have not transferred real wealth until you transfer your relationships now many non-christians understand this and they begin to program their children you've seen that happen they program their children to have strategic relationships political relationships economic relationships judicial relationships military relationships only believers we pray in tongues and yet we are bankrupt of intelligence Please sit down. The house of God is a place of wisdom. Next time your child says, I'm ready for my inheritance. Tell him, go to the house of the uncle that helped me and go and wash his car. He says, I'm too big. Say, sit down. You are not ready for a relationship. You are not ready for any inheritance. Don't give him any car key for anything give him relationships every man is made by his relationships because all blessings come from God through men to men nothing comes directly comes from God if God says yes and a physical man says no that yes will remain in the realm of the spirit there is someone learning please look up I can tell you this my life today is a product of strategic relationships there are hard things that have become childishly easy because of the leverage of relationships the relationship with the holy spirit the relationship with strategic men please do not downplay the power of relationships 
look at me how many of you have strategic relationships within the judiciary if you are in trouble today nobody loves you enough to help you you will suffer both satan and men will walk in partnership and rubbish your life because you have not seen the value many of you have fought and insulted politicians you have insulted everyone the day you now need help and you need the gates to be open for you there are times that you can be joseph but you will still be in prison it will take the king to send for you to come out of your dungeon hallelujah when you see businessmen and politicians I'm, I'm not marketing any of them but i'm just teaching you wisdom you've heard me say it when a businessman will leave america and come to nigeria to celebrate the birthday of a two-year-old billionaire son is the baby his mate can the baby talk to him what do you think he's doing to fly a private jet hundreds of thousands of dollars to come and greet a baby is more than a baby and then he comes with his own children he comes with his own children he says this one is called john whether this one wants to play with him or not he will force that relationship to happen because he knows believers let's learn let's learn let's learn please sit down the bible says which man intending to wage war against a city will first count whether he has what it takes to fight and if he discovers he does not have the next thing is the way of negotiation and relationship for peace to reign there are people today they do not have money but they can cough out billions out of relationships and it will answer in the multitude of men is a king's honor not just the multitude of things to the degree to which you can call on the help of men and they can respond to you with unbending loyalty that is the degree to which you are great value men and value relationships inheritance number three relationships and connections relationships and connections someone once asked me a question one day i told you he said how come you are close to a lot of you seem to have a lot of generals and military people and paramilitary what is between you and military people i said god knows the kind of call upon my life that's why he brought those relationships if you touch me both god and men whether you go to the realm of the spirit or from the physical realm there is a system that's for sure while i'm praying my own oh, listen let me encourage you here please look up let me ask you a simple question i've asked you this but i will ask it again can you mention one person in your life right now who you can actually call and say i need help by 2 a.m and he will wake up and say i value you so much help is coming if you don't have such a person in your life believe me you are sitting on a time bomb there are men of god who love the lord sincerely but they lack strategic relationships i'm not talking of parasitic relationships that every time people see you they know that this taker has come there are people in this nation if their car gets burnt in the next one hour another car is coming even if it's for temporal use they will never be left in shame there are people today if their house gets burnt they will have a place to spend the night can i tell you this among the many things you invest in please invest in men this is the world of men place value on men i was very honored and even flattered when i came in i thought i did something wrong i saw you people shouting and clapping on one hand sincerely i'm a very conservative person i can be shy and except when i'm on stage of course once i'm not on stage when i'm on stage that anointing is on me so I, I don't really care but outside of that i can you know but when i saw you clapping on one hand i felt of course i didn't it wasn't necessary but on another hand i was praying i said lord may somebody learn it who loves you enough to be there for you 
don't budge into a future you did not invest in and expect a stake in it no who's who did you help to rise when someone was crying were you there to wipe the tears if you were not there when i was in the cave of adulam don't expect an invitation when i'm celebrating listen one of the easiest ways to rise is to find something working and someone rising and be part of the history of growth hallelujah by the privilege of god's grace with the bit that i've been able to do for god in ministry and leadership i've had the honor of seeing some of my dear people within the ministry and by extension spiritually i've seen the mighty and the marvelous things that god continues to do with them in ministry in leadership in business and when i sit with them and they share this with me my heart is genuinely gladdened can i tell you as tired as i am there are people when they call i will wake up don't ask me who if you don't know you are not it can somebody see you as being valuable a valuable contributor to their life many of you have knocked on doors and ended up in shame because you use your days of glory thinking about yourself alone and never consider that this is the a world that that is interdependent please change and teach your children there are children who are respectfully speaking lousy they don't respect anybody they just believe that things will work out they are not building their track record of relationship because they think they have money or they think they have some kind of thing they laugh at the houseboy laugh at the cleaner laugh at anybody and then the tables just turn sometimes overnight is god giving us wisdom turn to your neighbor and say i value you let me say it now hear me as i'm saying it i value you i value that relationship don't act tomorrow like you don't know me remember koinonia look up please praise the lord praise the lord now please look up look up do you know hear me do you know that relationships can create not only leverage they can create exemptions it is true there are people today who have owned land they did not pay for houses they did not pay for relationships paid for it Who knows you and loves you by reason of your committal and genuine sincere connection and contribution to their lives there are people everybody who is close to you you have hurt and wounded and caused pain life is watching you tonight is a night of repentance change because you are programming woes over your children whilst you are seated there in one minute please lay your hands on your head and say lord grant me the wisdom the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships and then the wisdom to start connecting my children and my children's children to the strategic relationships that have worked for me please pray you are a young man here pray for the grace to build strategic relationships you are an elderly person pray father the grace to maintain the relationships that have helped my success and that my children will have the discipline and the humility to value relationships. Your connections, your relationships. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes 
are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.